What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Joe Rogan's thoughts on the type of fight Conor McGregor should return to. With Conor McGregor aiming for a return to the cage later this year, there's been speculation about who he should fight next. The Irishman has been calling out champions and has finally landed on one man who he thinks he can beat, and that's welterweight champion Kamaru Usman, the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the UFC right now. For Conor, the chance to become a champ, champ, champ is too frothy to pass up. However, Conor most likely wouldn't have fought for at least a year by the time he does return to the cage, and he's coming off a broken leg injury. He's also on a two-fight losing skid thanks to back-to-back -back bouts against Dustin Poirier, has lost three of his last four dating back to 2018. The only thing that Conor truly has going for him to get him back to these big-time fights is his name recognition and his microphone skills. He's still a massive draw in MMA and generates boatloads of cash for the UFC seat, so there's no doubt he would be pushed into the front of the line for any big time bout. But UFC color commentator Joe Rogan believes that Conor should be smart when he gets back and take a tune-up fight before he gets in there with the likes of Usman and his ilk. Case in point, this is what he stated in a recent appearance on the Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson podcast. If Conor wants the most chance of success, I would say fight a guy who is a little below championship level, maybe a guy on the come up who like Connor has an advantage over, but it's still a competitive fight. Give him a test, but don't put him in there like right away with Usman, and especially like who knows what's going on with his leg. What do you think of Rogan's comments here? Do you agree with him? If not, let us know in the comments. Bisping no longer in talks to fight Jake Paul and tells him to accept Anderson Silva fight. Jake Paul is doing what he does best and marketing the hell out of himself by continuing to call out a retired 43-year-old MMA fighter with one eye and bum knees in Michael Bisping for a boxing fight. Jake Paul can't seem to let this one go, mostly because if you've been following Jake at all, he loves the promotional aspect more than anything else. And Bisping did the one thing that all others don't really do. He responded directly to Jake's call out and he did it in a video on YouTube. Bisping was candid about taking a fight against Jake Paul and the count said he would fight it, but any potential fight against him would have to take place without a sanctioning body, or at least outside the US. Jake Paul has stated that he'd also be keen to box Anderson Silva, but he keeps dodging questions over that and continuing to harp on the whole Bisping thing. Case in point, in a recent video he posted on Twitter, Jake Paul continued to lambast Bisping with a caption that read this. Dear Bisping, I challenge you to stop hosting your struggling podcast, get licensed to fight, and box me. Let's see if that UFC belt and all the respect you have can help you beat me in a boxing match. Then, Bisping posted a video of a representative from a fight commission just outside of Calgary, Alberta, Canada, called the Tsutina Combative Commission, which publicly confirmed they would license Bisping for this boxing fight. The caption that Bisping posted was this, Your move, Jake. Then, in a slithery move, ignoring that whole statement from the commission, Jake Paul then added a hoop for Bisping to jump through and required that Bisping prove he's not under contract by the UFC anymore, thinking that he's going to own him through this? This is what Jake Paul stated. At Bisping, post legal confirmation that you are not under UFC contract and I will get you a contract. You retired in 2017 and Dana still got you by the and we fight where I tell you we fight. Then, Bisping responded to that tweet by telling Jake to just get off his butt and challenge the one man who everyone is saying fits the bill, Anderson Silva. Jake the Pretender Paul. First it was fight me, then was show me you can get licensed, and now it's show me you're not under contract. Mate, I wouldn't give you the steam off my piss. Just accept the Anderson Silva fight which I know for a fact has been offered. Jake? While Pig Jaw harps on whether Bisping is still under contract with the UFC, it really doesn't matter. Bisping has one eye and has admitted that he'd lied to athletic commissions in the United States in order to be able to get sanctioned to fight MMA for all those years. Now, after making that admission, years after he retired from the sport, it's unlikely that any athletic commission in the US would actually sanction him for a bout. The fact that Jake Paul keeps bringing up Bisping's contracted status in the UFC is a smokescreen and truly doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. But hey, whatever makes fake Paul feel better, right? Moving on to Anderson Silva, the Spider is 4-1 in pro boxing. He has as many fights as Jake Paul does, 5. He's also 47 years old. He's a former MMA champion. He's also retired from the sport. It seems that Silva ticks all of the boxes of the people that Jake Paul has been calling out, and he's actually fought guys like that, Ben Askren and Tyron Woodley. 
In fact, Ben Askren and Tyron Woodley were closer to their retirement from MMA than Silva, and they're much younger than Silva. So what's the holdup here? Now, it's important to note that Silva is actually going to fight in an exhibition boxing match sometime next month against Bruno Machado in a Floyd Mayweather event. So if Jake actually does want this to take place, it would have to happen at least this summer at the earliest, perhaps though in autumn. But what do you make of this back and forth between Bisping and Jake Paul? And do you think Jake Paul would actually fight Anderson Silva? Who would you have in that fight? And what about Jake Paul's insistence on fighting a one-eyed retired 43-year-old fighter? And do you think he'll ever challenge a boxer? Don't forget to take a second to hit that like button and subscribe to the MMA Zone to stay up to date on all of the latest fight news. Rose Nama Yunus and Aspen Ladd are victims of sexual predator coaches, according to Sean Strickland. MMA's wild man Sean Strickland is using some of his downtime in between training sessions to address something he sees within his peers in the MMA world, namely the personal relationships between certain female fighters and their coaches. Last October, MMA fans and some fighters came down hard on fight coach Jim West for the way he was talking to UFC female fighter Aspen Ladd during her fight against Norma Dumont. Ladd lost that fight by a unanimous decision after 25 minutes, but the public scrutiny on West was pretty hard, and he eventually apologized for how he spoke to Ladd. Now, it's important to note that West is not only Ladd's coach, but he's also her boyfriend. The two have been in a romantic relationship for quite some time, and this is what Strickland was talking about when he tweeted out this on Thursday. So, I'm pretty sure Aspen Ladd is suffering from Stockholm Syndrome, LMAO. I didn't really care about the corner video, but when you add some other facts to the situation, it's a little f creepy, LMAO. Then, after having some lunch, two hours later, Strickland was back at it again and stated this. Women are very easy targets for male coaches, automatically assume weird father role which turns into a hero worship complex. The fact you started to train with him at what, 12? 100% grooming sexual predator. Tell me my facts are wrong and I'll apologize now, at Aspen Lad. Then, in a follow-up tweet a few minutes later, Strickland set his sights on Pat Barry and Rose Nama Yunus's relationship, lumping them in with West and Ladd. Is Jim West and Pat Barry the Weinstein of MMA, or is Michael Jackson a better comparison? Netflix is currently contacting Aspen Ladd and Rose Nama Yunus for a TV series, lol. Okay, I'm done, gotta spar. In an episode of the Joe Rogan Podcast, Rose and Barry spoke about their relationship, and the two met when Rose was 14 years old at the gym and Barry was 27. There's a 13 year age gap between the two, as Rose is now 29 and Barry is 42. But what do you think about Strickland's comments here? Let us know in the comments. You know, I have a good relationship with these guys in terms of like outside of fighting. Um, it's just the business aspect, you know? They want to pay us less. We always want to get paid more. And we all rightfully think that there's more money that could be divvied out to the fighters because of how much money they clear quarterly. It's a public company, so we get to see those numbers. And it's just like, you mean to tell me if you gave us an extra 5%, that's going to kill you guys that much? To give the fighters an extra 5% of upwards of over $800 million in half a quarter, in half a half a year? I, I, I think we, I think you guys will survive. I think that's the best way I could put that. I do think coming in with a base salary, your first fight to be able to make 100K where you could pay for medicals, you could pay for uh, expenses just to get to the fight. I think you're going to get a better product. You're going to get better athletes that can be able to provide for themselves and they can take a chance by not working a full-time job. Me having to be a substitute teacher for, what was it, three years that I was with the company before I finally was able to stop completely, just focus solely on fighting, not having to go between lunch periods to go try to get an extra cardio session. I hustled my ass off, you know? All of us did. An extra 5% is not going to kill these guys, you know? And a 5% will go a long way to sprinkle that across the entire roster. Joe Rogan gives his honest take on Kamaru Usman Canelo Alvarez boxing clash. Kamaru Usman has repeatedly called out boxing world champion Canelo Alvarez over the last few months, saying he wants to fight the best of the best around the world and to get highly compensated for it. Given that Usman is currently the pound for pound best fighter in the UFC and in all of MMA by extension, he's looking at challenging the pound for pound best boxer in the world in Mexico's Canelo Alvarez. Canelo himself left open the possibility for this fight and stated why not when he was asked by reporters. At the moment, Canelo is set to fight Dimitri Bivol on May 7th and likely is going to have to fight Gennady Golovkin in a trilogy bout later this year, perhaps around Mexican Independence Day. Some people have been weighing in on any potential Usman-Canelo matchup and now Joe Rogan 
in a recent episode of the Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson podcast, spoke about what he thinks this fight could do for Usman and stated he wants to see it. This is what he said exactly. I, I would like to see him fight Canelo. I really mm. would. Not because I think that he's a favorite in a boxing match against one of the greatest boxers of all time, but I want to see him get a giant payday. The same way I would like to see Ngannou fight Tyson Fury. That's a way you can make a load of money. And I don't think it damages his potential as a, a UFC fighter. I think it would be invaluable experience for him. Rogan had previously stated that he believes if they do meet in the ring in boxing, Canelo would win. But that doesn't mean Usman wouldn't be able to get anything out of this fight. The idea of having a massive payday for a fighter in Usman who has lost only one fight throughout his whole MMA career and has never lost in the UFC is something that many could get behind, if only to make sure that someone with that high of a skill level gets compensated well for it. But what do you think about Rogan's comments about Usman and Canelo? Do you want to see this fight eventually? And do you think Usman could pull off the upset in this potential boxing matchup? Today's video was packed with some juicy stories from the fight world. What are your thoughts about what's going on in MMA? Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the MMA Zone to see more videos just like this. See you next time.